from ABC News Radio, KMET 1490 in Southern California. This is Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio with your host, Tyler Jorgensen. All right, welcome out to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio. I am your host, Tyler Jorgensen, and today I have a very special guest, uh, somebody that I've known for a long time, and somehow, some way, we haven't gotten him onto the show yet, but I'm very excited to have Dave Woodward, the CEO of ClickFunnels. Welcome out to the show, Dave. Hey, Tom, so excited to be here. Thanks, I appreciate the invite. So Dave, I, uh, I looked through my emails to see when the very first email I ever received from Dave Woodward was, <laughs> and it was November 6th, 2009. <laughs> and it was an email about the 12-month internet millionaire. And I'm assuming it was an affiliate offer or something that you were it was. Pushing. Um, but this show, we love to go through really your entrepreneurial journey. When was that moment in your life where you realized, I'm an entrepreneur? Maybe I don't see the world just like everyone else. I probably was in college at the time. I, okay. I'd had a whole bunch of things prior to that, but when I finally decided that's the direction I'm going to go, I was in college. Okay. And what was the first thing that you did kind of out of that? What, you know, what was your first entrepreneurial venture? So at the time I was accepted to medical school a week before I was supposed to go and chose not to. And I remember talking to the admissions clerk and she was like, this will be the greatest mistake you ever make. You're never going to be able to make more money. You're never going to be able to be successful. You'll regret this every single time you take your kids to the doctor. Why in the world are you doing this? And I'm like, I just don't, I just don't feel like it's me. And I remember after that, I went through about a year of just ugh, trying to figure things out, uh, got a master's in exercise physiology with no desire to use it, uh, just trying to figure things out. But a buddy of mine, actually, his dad owned a bunch of, uh, owned basically the third of the state of Kentucky's physical therapy clinics. And that's where I started spending time realizing that was the direction I wanted to go. I wanted to be a business owner. I wanted to figure that part out. So I went to the PT school uh, to get a master's and about a year into that, I bailed out and dropped out of that one because I thought, you know, that's just not for me either. And I'd been married for about three months at the time. And my wife was going, what in the world? And it was at that point that uh, her brother-in-law is when it kind of got me out of that frustrational educational loop to uh, really starting a business in uh, employee benefits. And so he and I started an employee benefits firm in Texas. I later took that to California. We sold that company. And that was, that was my real entree as my first business owner. So... Your first business like that you did, you would say it was successful. It I was. mean, you, you scaled it, you sold it. You, yeah. You, you, yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's not normal. Just so you know, Dave, like that's not normal. <laughs> Most people, their first one isn't a win like that. But that's well, really the reality, cool. Let me add yeah. a little caveat to that is it got sold and I got screwed. Uh, that's what Ah, uh, There's the life lesson we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it got so sold and I was supposed to have made money on the deal and did not. Ah, so you got a little bit of, you got zucked, you got Zuckerberg'd. Very badly. <laughs> Man, and this was with a family member. It was. So not going into the details of that because, you know, family, but what did you learn from that? Actually, I learned a ton. I think the uh, very first thing I learned was the importance of, of papering things, of documenting things. Um, and again, I'm still dear friends to this day. I've, never, I've always separated business and family. Yeah. And it's never been an issue for me that way. Um, but I think the main thing was it was just a misunderstanding of what I thought I had been verbally promised and didn't have anything in writing. So I, I realized the importance of uh, getting things in writing was probably the first thing. Yeah. I think the other thing I really learned from it, uh, which was great, and that was um, it takes a lot more than you ever think to actually get a company off the ground. And it takes, again, five times as long as you think it's going to get to be profitable. Um, we sold it just at the point where I was just starting to make a bunch of money in it and had to start all over again. Uh, there wasn't any, you know, opportunity with me in the new thing after we sold it. And so I realized uh, at that point was really, you've got to make sure that you know, know the people you're going to business with. And more importantly, that uh, you know where you're going to go afterwards. I think a lot of people sell things and then they're like, what do I do now? And that was, yeah. me. I didn't know. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I've heard once uh, a saying that I really like and when it comes to partnerships and business deals, and it's that the faintest ink is stronger than the best memory. Right? Absolutely and right. So, <laughs> uh, you know, and I've, look, I, I've been through a lot of partnerships and a lot of things that didn't always work out. And I, I'm always like, look, we write it down to save the friendship, to make sure that we are okay. So that later on when the emotion subsides, we can 
we still have that paper to, to go back to. And, uh, and I, I met after going through a pretty rough business partnership that broke down, uh, I had someone that said, you need to approach business partnerships, anything like that, more detailed than you do a, like a marriage. Like you've got to talk about all kinds of hypotheticals of what happens if this person gets divorced or this person does this, what happens to those shares? And here's the trick. If that's not comfortable for the partners to talk about, then you're not going to have the fortitude <laughs> to deal with it when it comes up. <laughs> like, cause that's at the beginning. That's when Absolutely. there's no emotion. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that's a really good life lesson to have taken from that. And, uh, so what did you do next? Uh, I actually, I struggled there for a while. I went back into kind of personal production, just trying to put food on my table. Of course. Um, just trying to figure things out. And yep. I, I realized that the part I enjoyed the most about the business I was in was the marketing piece. And at the time, it had just kind of come just naturally through things. And I realized I just didn't know enough. And so I doubled down on education like crazy. Uh, started following Dan Kennedy, started doing a ton of research, a ton of reading, trying to figure out just more of the marketing side than the sales side. I was, again, just out there selling insurance and, and just trying to put food on the table versus yeah. trying to grow anything. And once I realized the importance of the biggest investment was going to be in me versus anything I could invest in capital wise, I just doubled down like crazy on education. That's awesome. So you, you, you mentioned Dan Kennedy, who are some of the other people that you just found uh, momentum through that information that they were putting out? Uh, Jay Abraham was definitely another one. Um, I, there was a, I actually bought into a, I can't remember the guy's names. Uh, it was a, a business in a box franchise marketing thing um, called Y2 Marketing back in the early 2000s. And a yeah. lot of their stuff was kind of patterned after Jay Abraham, but it was more sure. of a system. Yep. And so that was the very first thing I, I really kind of bought into. Uh, they quickly disappeared, uh, didn't work type of deal. And But what I realized was the importance of creating systems. And yeah. so that was the life lesson I got from that was no matter what you do in, in business, you're gonna have to create some systems that you can follow. Yeah, that's huge. And so um, you and I, again, maybe I've been getting your emails since 2009, but uh, the first time I met you was in was in San Diego at Funnel Hacking Live. The second one, uh, I'm still to this day mad at myself for not going to Vegas because Mark Bangader, <laughs> Mark Bangader went and I could have gone with him. And I was like, no, nah, man, just you, you bring me the information back, right? And he did. He came back so pumped up and it was amazing. But I've been listening on the MP3 play, right? I've been listening to all of the first one. And I've been listening to uh, like as um, they've been going through tripwires. And I'm like, man, <laughs> so many people are trying to get to like chapter 30, but they're not going back and reading chapter yeah. one. So how did you get started? Like in your journey, you're going through all those other things, right? You're, you're meeting. How did you connect with Russell? How did you connect into ClickFunnels? I ended up having a marketing. I built a marketing agency at the time. Uh, had a bunch of clients in the real estate mortgage investment. It's kind of where I cut my teeth. Yep. And it was at that point where... Again, this is 2007, 2008, things are starting to kind of crumble-ish and a lot of them were trying to find out, we were doing a ton of direct mail, which is working, and they thought there's got to be a way of going online. And I didn't know that much about it. And so I found a seminar that Russell happened to be putting on in Anaheim. And so I went down to the seminar and he and Stu McLaren were talking about affiliate marketing. And I remember they got up and basically said, hey, if you'd like to get to know us better or pick our brains, just go to the back of the room and sign up for lunch or dinner and take us out to dinner and, and talk. And I'm like, Learn again, life lesson. I would much rather talk to those people who are having the success than trying to figure it out myself. So I went back there and signed up for every breakfast, lunch, and dinner that Russell had. Yep. And we became dear friends uh, from that. We had the opportunity of doing business in a bunch of different things. Some worked, some didn't. But uh, when ClickFunnels kind of came around, we by that point had had a you know, six, seven year friendship and uh, knew kind of my skill set and my success and invited me in to be a partner from the very beginning. And that's where we got going. That's really cool. And so that tells me, based on what else you said, kind of to back up, I have another email from you from <laughs> 2009 from the team at Growth Strategy Partners LLC. Uh, oh and I'm assuming gosh. that's you too. So <laughs> that was <laughs> you were, because uh, I was in real estate at the time. And, uh, and you were like, we've got a cash buyer for your short sale on this property. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and buried in the footer. Off. Buried in the footer is sent from Dave Woodward. So oh I love this gosh. kind of stuff, right? Like the world we live in is so interconnected, which <laughs> it, to me is such a big life lesson, right? Like you're never oh. going to be perfect, but man, don't 
don't do crappy stuff like because your reputation is going to follow you forever. And so, um, but that's, I love that you built that long friendship, long relationship partnership so that when it came time to do the next step, you were, you were there. Right. And that's very think and grow rich style. Like, Hey, just know what you want to do. What did you have any hesitation when he approached you to get to be involved in the beginning? Tons. Yeah. (laughs) My wife probably had more than I did. Um, (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) No, there was, I had gone through a massive loss financially through the whole 2011, 12 period. And by 2014, I was just barely digging out and was doing, again, at that time I was flipping a ton of houses. It was making great money, was teaching other people how to do it. And um, we're literally, my wife and I were just finally, it'd been a, it'd been a long hope and finally getting out and the opportunity to start over again. And she's like, Dave, I, and we'd had some wins and some losses uh, with Russell and I, as far as some yeah. of the deals work, some didn't. And she's like, we don't have, if I look at the, we're probably breaking even right now on this deal. And she goes, I just, I don't want to, I just don't want to go backwards. And I'm like, sweetheart, I understand that. And this is one of the things where I just, this is just a gut feeling, sweetie. I just feel like this is the right place to go. And I've always, the one thing I have learned is my wife is the best judge of character. I probably would have saved myself millions of dollars in losses if I just would have listened to her. But sure. um, she basically said, you know what? I feel right about it. Let's do it. And that's, if, if she hadn't given that blessing, I wouldn't have done it. Man, what, uh, is she okay with the decision in hindsight? In hindsight, she's actually pretty good with it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> she was it's actually worked one of the, out. <laughs> yeah, one of the caveats was, I just don't want to have to move. And I said, oh, no problem. We're, it's all remote. So <laughs> we built ClickFunnels for the first two years remote. And then uh, yeah. I said, Well, Sweet you kept your that? promise for a little while, right? You, you stayed in California here for a bit. <laughs> and then, uh, but um, so let just real quick, since now we're on the ClickFunnels subject, where are we at with ClickFunnels? Where, where are you at in, uh, in subscriber or in, you know, in users and, and revenue? Like, where's the company? About 120,000 customers, uh, you know, called. 10, 15,000 are trials. So, you know, 105 or so paying customers in that area. Um, did 136 million in annual revenues last year uh, on target this year to be in the 150s and uh, looking at uh, growing international next year. Awesome. Yeah. Really cool stuff from, from remembering, I wasn't involved as early as you, obviously, but we were right out of beta. We signed up for this, the software and then um, obviously, Mark Bainter worked with me at the time. He's now with you guys, crushing it over there in your support team. Um, but it's been fun. It has been an amazing journey just to be to witness from the outside. It's been so cool. I mean, if you, my walls now all click funnels, right? <laughs> I mean, I've got <laughs> I've got the the uh, world record over here, and I've got the two comma clubs. I don't have my diplomas on the wall, but I've got all my <laughs> click funnels swag. And so, <laughs> um, but man, it's, uh, I, the content you guys put out is amazing. And I, I, I love the, the system and the culture that you guys have. What, um, there are, there's a ton of content out there about that. And, and you guys are just absolutely amazing at education, which is my favorite part of what you guys do really help people understand what they have to do to make the software work. Cause it's not, it's not about software. It's about the frameworks and the systems and the things to, to build a business. Um, what was, you know, you've talked about a couple of the big hurdles you had to overcome. What was a big in, you know, in your journey, getting to click funnels, what was something that you guys had to overcome as a company in those first couple of years and how'd you get over it? Oh man, gosh, there's a whole bunch of those. Yeah, um, there's, yeah, pick, pick one. <laughs> I, I, well, the very first one was just trying to get customers. Um, yeah, that's again, important. It, it was, uh, you know, you build this idea and you think it's going to work and, and, Again, it's the whole idea of the field of dreams, you know, build it, they will come. They just don't. <laughs> they just don't. And nope. uh, so we had a couple of false starts. Uh, actually, September 23rd of 2014 is really kind of our birthday. We're coming up on that next week. And in doing that, uh, one of the main things, so it'll be six years. But I think the, the big win really came when uh, Russell was presenting on Mike Phil's same stage in October down in San Diego. And I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday where, you know, we were in this little tiny room in a little hallway lead pages was on one side we were on the other we had booths basically we're making fun of you know did your funnel building software just do landing pages and and i remember it actually when russell uh it was funny because we were in the room watching russell speak and i remember I, as soon as he got done it's like we finally got it i'm like what and the whole reason he said that is because we literally it's the first time ever we had 
this massive stage rush. I mean, just back of the room rush where people were going to sign up. And I think the primary reason was because we were able to treat it. For, we took it from being a software to an actual a tool that a business owner could use in their business and show them exactly how. And that one 90 minutes presentation is really what began the fuel of what became webinars with a bunch of joint venture partners and things, and really is what helped us to take ClickFunnels to the next level. I remember actually standing in the back of the room with the, Mike Koenigs had just sold his company and for undisclosed amount at the time. And I was just, I said, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine how much money that would be. <laughs> and again, I think it was probably, you know, right around the 10 million mark or whatever it might've been. Yeah. And thinking, gosh, what would it take to get to a company like that? And it's been fun to kind of see and to scale and grow that. Another one was when the, we basically, the software went down. <laughs> uh, the server, the database it was on just crashed. And you've got, I mean, we're the number one user of our own platform. So we felt right. the pain. And, you know, Russell, literally, we just left an event in uh, Colorado. I'd spoken to Dan Kenny's event. Done super well. And he was flying over to London. And Todd basically voxed us saying, you know what? We're screwed. We can't get this thing up. Well, I don't know how to do this. What's going to happen? And we literally, fortunately, Todd and Ryan Montgomery, our CEO, at the, they basically rebuilt it on a different database, moved everything over. And fortunately, they did because it never would have taken, would have taken days and days and days. And we were able to pull it off within about a 24-hour period of time. And I think the, the main lesson I learned out of that was the importance of transparency. Because yes. Russell literally landed and apologized and said, this is where we're at. Things aren't working. We understand that. We know how painful this is for you. We're doing the same thing. And so that was some of the, the learning experiences there was, man, first, first lesson was you got to get the right message, which we got at Mike Phil same stage. The next one was the importance of transparency. And yep. both those two things really helped us overcome a lot of the pain and the frustration. I remember when, I don't remember the, the first one because it wasn't around yet, but I do remember when the software went down and I was super like, look, I've got hundreds of funnels and between yeah. myself and my clients, we, we're all over the place and we got a lot of them that have a lot of ad dollars going into them. It, it sucks. There's no way to get around that. But the fact that there was communication and that it was like, okay, they're, they're working on it. This, we, they'll know, we'll know more when they know more. Gave at least that certainty that there was no, nothing being hidden, right? Nothing. Because yeah. you see that happen, especially right now when it, it, there's a lot of chaos in the world. And when, people are, when things go, are starting to happen, people going quiet, like that doesn't help. <laughs> no. It doesn't no. help anybody. It might make it slightly <laughs> less painful for a, a moment for you. But you're just building up a wall of, of you know a tidal wave of pain later. Um, yeah, those those are really cool lessons. And what do you think? Uh, so you said when the major difference, like when Russell had presented that, you know, where he really was able to position things differently. Really, kind of the beginning of the perfect webinar. What um, what was the difference of how he had been doing it, and like. What and what's the lesson there for everyone else, right? What should they? Where's that thing, the knob they need to dial yeah. to make that difference? I think before a lot of it was the time we had Funnel Fridays, and each Friday Russell would get on and he would talk about all these cool new features and things that were added, and so it was more of a features type of thing. The software will do this, and it'll do this, and it'll do this. Um, the webinar was different because it was let me show you how you actually can use this in your business, right? And so we went from a features benefits approach to. We know your pain and the problems that you're trying to deal with. Let me solve the problem for you. And it became much more of a problem solving webinar or presentation from stage that people could then get their own ahas. I think it was the biggest lesson was the importance of making sure if you look at any webinar sales, the person who's sitting there has to get their own aha. They've got to see how they can use it. Going through a list of features and benefits doesn't do that until they can actually see it in their own life. Yeah. Awesome. Now, when you started five years ago or coming up on what coming up on six uh, with click funnels, you've had to grow as a person to go from who that guy was Dave Woodward 20, you know, 2014 to Dave Woodward 2020. What was the biggest hurdle you personally had to overcome in your personal development? And like, what are some, you know, call outs? What are some things that have helped you to grow? Oh, sure. Uh, I think some of the main things um, personally was uh, from a management standpoint, I've always kind of been the solopreneur managing, you know, 10 to 20 employees type of deal. You can do that. Um, once you start getting a hundred employees, it's a totally different game. And so yeah. I think some of the main things for me was leadership growth. I ended up hiring Jarek Robbins, Tony's son and coached with him. I'm a huge believer in coaches. Um, I, I just believe that there's so much value you can get from someone else who can see 
into you and can have those conversations. Right. Uh, so that attended a, tons of different events, uh, became parts of Joe Polish's mastermind, Dean Graziosi's mastermind with Joe Polish, um, attended, uh, let me see if I can find it there. It's anyways, uh, dear friend of mine, basically has his, his three day MBA program and, uh, went to that really understanding how to actually do things in the real world faster. And so for me, it was a speed of learning. I talked to a ton of people, um, asked a lot of introspective questions and asked them to help me. Where am I short? Where am I falling short? I, I'm a huge believer in the, you know, what got you to where you're at will never get you to where you need to go. Right. And so it was, how do I get there? And just started finding yeah. out. And that's hard for a lot of people because oftentimes, I mean, look, you had already ascended to a pretty, pretty epic position. Your company was already doing well. You're in a place where most people are looking to you for advice, right? So it's very easy to be like, I'm good because I'm a, I can help all these guys, right? Instead of saying, but I have more but there's more I could be, I could be more, I could do more. And, uh, and so that's really, I mean, I love you. The fact that you have a list of things that you did to grow shows just how growth minded you were, right? It wasn't like, well, one day I woke up and I decided I wanted to be better, right? It was because <laughs> that's what some people will say. Well, I just made a decision to be, to be growth minded. No, like you saw it, coaches, guides, mentorships, masterminds. Um, obviously like, ClickFunnels has inner circle, but how important are masterminds for entrepreneurs in terms of growth? I think they're the most important thing. I can't think of anything that's more important. Uh, you know, you run across people all the time asking, so where should I invest my money? And I'm just a huge believer, you invest in yourself first. There's, yeah. That's the greatest asset. You're the one who's going to be able to produce more than any other stock, real estate, no matter what. Um, so I'm just a huge believer in investing in those masterminds. Um, I just... <laughs> I would, I've invested literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in masterminds and I would do it again and again every time. I, I was just at a mastermind last week with just that Justin Williams put on. It was kind of an informal yeah. last name. But, and, uh, and I was watching as like, obviously Justin's been to some, there was two or three other people in the room that had been to either in Inner Circle or been in other masterminds. But I was watching as these kind of like entrepreneurs that were new to that space as they like lit up, as they saw just what was happening, as somebody did a presentation and then got immediate feedback, and then the group kind of solved problems together. Um, and, and Alex Ramosi just did a podcast on how his two biggest days in his business in terms of momentum happened both at Masterminds, right? One at Inner Circle, one at the Pirate's Cove. And I, it's amazing how most people still just look at that as, oh, it's expensive, or oh, it's a cost, or oh, it's this. Um, and you know, look, I mean, there's times where I wish I could, there's masterminds that I couldn't afford yet. They were out of my reach, sure. but, uh, so let's go to that. Like, let's say someone's not ready to invest 40, 50, 70, you know, whatever thousands of dollars, how can they get that same impact, uh, at their current level or that same, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I can tell you, you can create your own mastermind and I'm a huge believer. I literally, gosh, 2000, probably six, seven, eight, uh, was myself, my brother, Woody, and then Travis Tolstrup down at oh, yeah. uh, the Bayou Kitchen in Marietta that we would meet yep. once a week and just talk with each other about our businesses. I think the hardest part about being a business owner or a solopreneur is you're all by yourself and no one can relate to you. As an yep. entrepreneur, no one can relate. And I remember going out to, you know, we go out to dinner with my, my wife and we go with other couples and I just like, are you serious? I can't relate to any of these guys. I, they just, my mind is totally in left field. Yep. And so I think the, it, no matter where you're at in your business, you can always afford it. Even if it's literally, you get two or three people together and you come together and you just, if nothing else, accountability. Yeah, I love that. And I, I think it's, again, sometimes the people think a mastermind is only going to be this, you know, 25 people that paid $25,000. But yeah. you're right. A lot of times it's just get yourselves around like-minded people, um, connect with them, talk about, openly about what's going on. There was a, a dinner that I had um, with a bunch of ClickFunnels guys after FHL Dallas. And it was like Tyler and all the inner circle guys, right? And what the big thing I realized was everyone there spoke about their pain, like their, their problems and their mistakes exactly the way they seem about, spoke about their successes. They were just facts of the past. Yeah, that's it. There was an emotion. And so because of like peeling back that like ego or that persona around it, they were able to just help each other and like move faster. And I think that's what a mastermind does. They put you in a safe space of people that are peers, 
So there's no fronting, hopefully. Yeah. If you want to yeah. grow, you, you got to peel back the front, right? Yeah. What, uh, and so who, who are some of like the marketing legends, the people that you, you are shocked more people don't follow or listen to or study? Um, again, I, Dan Kenny probably prim- primarily cause that's where I kind of learned. Yeah. Um, again, I, I think right now, probably if you're not following Russell Brunson, I don't know why in the world you wouldn't. Um, right. Yeah. Dear friend, business partner, aside from all of that, I don't think anyone, the part I'm most impressed with him, he's always learning. And I think that you know, as you take a look at, at that kind of stuff, that's one of the main things I would look at. Um, yep. The other thing I would say is to really look at, I mean, going back to the, the legends of the past is one of the things, I mean, Gary Halbert and some of his copywriting mm-hmm. things, um, a lot of it just kind of depends on what part of it you're looking at. Um, sure. Going back right now, looking at some of Napoleon Hill's earlier things, even though I've read. Yeah. Think you're rich a million times. Uh, conversation with the devil is the one I'm listening to right now. And yeah, uh, I'm I'm literally like that's I'm on Napoleon Hill kick right now on my when I'm writing. Yeah. but I just finished Story Brand, which was really good. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely great names, great people that everyone should be studying. Who is uh, other than Russell and Dave Woodward? Who is the Dan Kennedy of tomorrow? Who's the person that you're like? This person's on the rise, and people need to be paying attention. Um, I honestly name you've already mentioned Alex Hermosi. Yeah. I think Alex I is a guy that I would definitely, uh, super humble, been through a school of hard knocks, ton, wicked smart. Um, his wife is just the same Layla. I would say both of them together, um, are a couple I would definitely be paying attention to. Totally agree. Absolutely. I would agree. That's on, that should be on every entrepreneur's list. Uh, originally his podcast, you know, with Jim launch or Jim secrets, right. But the rebranding, cause really what the lessons he's sharing are good for any entrepreneur. So awesome. I totally agree with that. Dave life and business or business is about creating a life, right? Like about funding that life. <laughs> what is something on your personal bucket list, not work related that you're going to do in the next 12 months? Well, if they would allow me to travel, <laughs> travel is the one thing I'm missing more than anything else, Tyler. Yeah. I, uh, I am dying to get to Europe again. Um, Italy is on the bucket list. I would love to get over to Italy. I would love to get to Israel. Um, the, my wife would love to go run the, the Great Wall of China Marathon. So in the next 12 months, those would be three places I would love to get to. If I plan a two to three day event, uh, in Croatia. Will you come with me? Sure. Dude, right. I, man, you, I, I would get on a plane to get out. I would travel yeah. anywhere these days. I'm, I'm really yep. itching to get on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know if you know, I do these little things called the 48 hour power jaunts where I'll just take off. I'll go to, I went to Barcelona for the weekend. I went to, cause it's hard as an entrepreneur. You don't have time to take seven to 10 days off. But you need travel. It like fuels the soul, like it changing does. location and all that. Totally. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done Bogota and Iceland and just all these. So Croatia is on list. It's a little bit longer flight because you're getting all the way over into Europe. But I think it's going to need to happen. So I will absolutely let you know. Please. It's on the very short list. But Dave, super, super appreciative of you coming on. Um, I hope everyone, like, please listen. Uh, w- other than ClickFunnels.com, where can people learn more about you, Dave? Uh, Facebook or Instagram. I'm on both of those. Uh, also have ClickFunnels radio podcast, which is an amazing podcast that I listen to and you should listen to. It's an interview show, uh, just going through, uh, ClickFunnels users and how they're using the platform as well as just marketers in general. Right. Yeah. And so that's ClickFunnels radio that you can find on, uh, all those major podcast platforms. Awesome. Well, Dave, thank you so much. Every, all my biz ninjas, wherever you're listening, it's your turn to go out and do something. Thank you for listening to Biz Ninja Entrepreneur Radio with Tyler Jorgensen. Please make sure to subscribe so you're first to hear new interviews and episodes. If you found this podcast to be valuable, please share it with a friend. Don't forget to visit our online dojo at bizninja.com to claim your reward for listening to the show.